All right, so our Cape Coral has just laid eggs, so we're just gonna open up here quickly and get them. Uh, let's see where she is, uh, she's still in the nest box. I just noticed earlier she was out and about, and I saw she was quite thin, and she's quite a little hissy girl, as most of them are. Okay. Now, so this is a Cape Coral. They're full of intimidation and hissing and all that, but they don't actually bite a lot of the time. They'll actually headbutt and things like that. So this is a Spidolips lubricus. Get a lot uh, here in the Western Cape, up into Northern Cape and further into South Africa. So this is pretty much an adult female. We just want to see if we can get her off her eggs here quick. All right. Quite nice and skinny now after laying all of those. We'll see what we've got here. Okay, so it looks like there are some duds, which is fine. So the duds are going to be sort of misshapen, more pointy at the end, and sort of yellowish color. Ah, there we that's what we're looking for. See that beautiful, nice and white? That's when you know you've got good fertile eggs. We could always candle them to see the red veins and that. And already see a sort of orangey red tinge inside. So we're just going to lay them in a mixture here of vermiculite and perlite. I always like to go with a sort of mix of 50 50. Oh, we've got a lot of duds. Looks like the boichi didn't do it this time. But as long as they all come out, that's good. That's the main thing. Oh no. Damn. Lots of little duds. And they obviously don't have a very high yield. It looks like it. One good egg, eh? Yeah. Okay, well, hopefully we can hatch this little guy. And I say at least the rest came out. So maybe something went a bit wrong with the cooling of the of the male. But yeah, it's not the end of the world. As long as she's got them all out and she starts eating again, I'm happy. But cool, we'll see if we can hatch this little guy. We've just got the, the date on here. And then we'll see. Hopefully everything goes well with the incubation and we can hatch that little chap. There you go. And then we get these duds out of here. She loves this little nest box. It would have six in total. Oh well, it was a lot. I think about two seasons ago we got it right and we got quite a good batch of babies. But uh, yeah, we can't get it right all the time. Alright, cool. I'm just going to put that there. You can go back inside there. Cool. So we'll see how this one goes. Alright, so it's 75 days later at an incubation of 28.5 degrees, around about. Um, I would have expected this little guy to hatch about 10 days earlier, but we easily can check with a see-through incubator as well as a see-through container. So I see he's just gone and hit himself again. Now I'm busy filming this with a macro lens, so we can get nice and close, but I have to use a manual focus which is a little bit difficult but the thing is if I use the autofocus it makes a lot of noise as the motors try and focus on everything so just forgive me if it gets a little bit blurry at times now you can actually see right through this egg that's pretty cool we'll see if we can just tickle the little guy out a bit you can see how it's oozing out there nicely come on little baby show yourself yes yeah, so, I mean pity we only got the one egg but uh, as I say, that's how the breeding can go sometimes. Just really cool to actually be able to hatch these little guys. This one looks like he's got some real cool color. I was actually checking the video the other day and I saw that my female has got quite a lot of red coloring on her with very little, if no yellow. 
All right, come on, little dude. His dad's got some yellow. We could maybe show dad later. We are you, little guy. Oh, this one looks super bright. Very pretty. Very, very shy little guys. Spend a lot of time underground and everything like that. This one's spending a lot of time in his egg. I don't think he's going to show himself for us right now. Okay, but see how cool it is. You can actually see right through that egg. Alright. Uh, so maybe have a little look when this guy's popping his head out. Super thin, thin skin on this. Oh, so, as I say, breeding didn't go too well, but I mean, it's nice just to have the one little baby. We'll probably house him in a container the same size as this incubation container in the beginning, and then we slowly upgrade them. Because that's the best way to do it with baby snakes. You don't go put a baby snake in a large container. They can sort of stress out, they hide on the cold side, don't even know about the hot side, and then they won't eat and so on. So we just give them a nice, quick, easy space to thermoregulate. So here we can see the little dude sticking his head out. Really, really cool. Such pretty snakes. I don't know if you guys can maybe see a little bit of the egg tooth. Camera's light is just gone. All right, so here you can see a little baby came out the egg last night and uh, they come out the egg quite feisty so these little guys they'll spread a hood like a cobra but they're not a true cobra so that's why it's also known as a cape coral cobra very bright warning colors and these guys are mostly active at night time i mean being colored like this and trying to move around during the day animals will easily spot you so if something has does dig it up or anything like that from underground, because these are very fossorial species living a lot underground, coming out at night to eat um, little lizards and geckos and things like that. So if an animal does uncover one of these and sees these bright warning colors, it might leave it alone thinking it could be poisonous or venomous. Obviously they are venomous, not poisonous. Okay, for a snake to be poisonous, you'd have to eat it for it to kill you where its venom has to be injected via fangs or a stinger. So, if something eats this little guy, the venom just gets broken down in the stomach acids. So these little guys work a lot on intimidation. Okay, when he strikes out and he's all hissy and stuff, he's not aggressive. He's scared, he thinks I'm gonna try and come and eat him, and he's trying to scare me off. He's trying to be like, hey dude, I'm big, I'm tough, don't mess with me. Intimidation is a very clever tactic to use. And a lot of the time when they actually strike, they don't bite. They just headbutt you. Now this is not something you should ever try. See, he's not even, see he's striking miss and headbutting me. But if I had to grab him, like actually try and pick him up then he's going to feel a lot more threatened and might bite now these snakes have a fairly mild neurotoxic venom paralyzing venom so you might get paralysis of your facial muscles and things like that droopy eyelids but um, very rarely causing any issues respiratory and stuff like that so maybe an adult one of these if it bites a child that can be extremely serious obviously a child doesn't have as much body weight as an adult so the effects can be a lot more serious, can potentially kill a child. But otherwise they're not really snakes that are a problem at all. Mostly active in the darkest of nights where they can't be seen. So interactions quite rare with these guys. And we do actually get them in, uh, in the bulval area as well. And then uh, all the way up through the Cedarburg is very popular with these guys, Northern Cape, these guys are like all over that areas. Such cool little snakes. Let's try and get this focus on his face over there. No. Maybe a bit too close with this lens. Very pretty color. So sometimes they can have a lot more yellow. So they'll actually be black 
yellow, red or orange. So they vary quite a bit. Um, Mom, as I think I mentioned earlier, is just pretty much red and black. Dad's got a bit of yellow. So we might get a little bit of yellow coming out. It looks almost pale white at this time. Um, but maybe we'll have a look at some of our babies from two years back or so. And see, also from the same parents and see how they sort of developed. Really cool little guys. Boop. Don't worry little dude, you're safe here. I'm gonna get some good food. So we start these little guys on um, day old pinkies. And uh, they're not too picky. Luckily we don't have to go with all geckos in the beginning and everything like that. I haven't had too much problems with them but you know one clutch can be quite different to the next. Some of them can be quite problematic. Alright so we're just very happy to hatch this little guy. Pity we didn't get uh, more fertile eggs. But mom's doing well. She's eating like a beast. So we're quite happy. As long as mom's okay, mom and dad's fine, then we're quite happy. This is just a little bonus. Awesome. Here's just a quick look at mom. Um, I think she's actually just going into or coming out of the blue. So she's got a little bit of a dull look to her. But on camera she looks quite nice and bright. You can actually see there's like literally no yellow on her whatsoever. She's a nice feisty little girl. But I mean that's a typical attitude of a coral. And I mean we leave them alone a lot. They like their small spaces where they feel safe and secure. It's not a snake we actually display much. We have tried displaying them but they just dig a hole and bury themselves. Because that's where they feel safest. So this is pretty much an adult female. Just sort of showing you size relation. So she's probably a little over 60 centimeters. So she's quite a, a good size female. This tub is 60 centimeters. Around about 50 odd. So you can see here she spreads a little bit of a hood using all that intimidation to try and keep things away. So the nice thing about these snakes you get quite a lot of brightness and different variation. Some can have lots of yellow like this one with hardly any yellow. Some with nice thin black bands, broader black bands. They do vary quite a bit. So that's mom. We'll take a look at dad quickly. Alright, so this here is dad. He's got a little bit more yellow but very similar to, to the mom. And he was just going absolutely crazy now when I took him out of his place. You can see there's like a lot of little poops and stuff. He actually hisses and he farts like crazy. So he's making noise out of both ends. He's not quite doing it now, but it's quite funny. Because he farts a lot. So he makes noises out of both ends. Obviously when they're sort of pooping and musking and then horrible smells go, a lot of animals can lose interest in, in them, not want to try and eat them. So it's also a good deterrent. Okay, now he's busy coming out of the thing here. We just don't want him to get away. All right, buddy. Oh, I don't know if you guys heard that. You just fought it again. <laughs> really little, real characters, these guys. There you can hear it makes that like funny noise besides the hiss. Yeah, real, real characters. Okay, you don't want to stress this little guy out too much. And uh, I don't know, some of you guys might be thinking like, shame, you're stressing him out and whatever. You know, if an animal like this is out in the wild, it is going to come across things bigger than it quite often, where it is going to go into this action to defend itself. So, you know, all, all in all, it's pretty natural for them to have this sort of interaction with other animals now and then. You can actually see this male's got nice little spots. It's almost like there should be another band but he's got like little spot markings there. But I don't think he's thrown that out much on the other siblings or anything, which we'll also take a look at some of the other babies. Cool. Yeah, okay, Dad. All right, so here's one of the babies from, I think, two years back. So this one's about two years old. This one's got quite a nice lot of orange. Looks quite similar to the Dad. 
they're doing very very well eating eating very well on their little fuzzy and hopper mice whoa we don't want you going back there buddy we'll lose you like that I'm gonna have to start moving things around to try and find you again but yeah you see pretty quick this one's not too defensive at the moment just gonna catch the little guy. Okay, so he's not too huffy puffy, but well, we don't want him getting lost anywhere. So we're just gonna pop him back. There you go, little dude. Feel nice and safe in your spot there. Okay, so here's another one. I was figuring just leave this one in its housing a lot easier. So you can see this one's got a little more of a sort of yellow to sort of cream bands also quite nice and orange though but these ones they're not too huffy puffy there we go there's a little puff Whoop, and he just wants to get away nice bright colors on these guys really cool okay and then we just got one more we need to check out it's the last one that i'm keeping of the babies all right then this is the last of our babies so I just kept three babies from the last time I actually bred them. So they all come from the same pair. And you can see this one's almost like it's not, the contrast is not as sharp. It's almost like the colors merge into one another. Almost each scale's got like a little border on it with this one. They are just such cool little snakes to keep. Unfortunately, they don't display very well. But the odd little interactions we have always exciting. <laughs> oh, so cool, that's pretty much the little breeding project we got of these guys. Um, eventually we'll have, we'll maybe get some different bloodlines to pair with these siblings. And then uh, we'll maybe add on to the breeding project. Cool, hope you guys enjoyed this little video. You can uh, just give us a like and a subscribe. If you want to see more cool content, we've got a lot more videos coming with um, different breedings of different species. Um, we had a, we didn't focus on breeding a lot of species this year, but we do have some really cool stuff coming up.